If you're trying to make any kind of meaningful, effective change in your life, you've come to the right place. All right, everyone. I'm so excited about my guest today. Uh, we are going to be talking, first of all, before I introduce them, we're going to be talking about finding your voice both inside and outside of your relationship. And then we're also going to talk about some relationship tips um, from kind of a unique perspective. So I have a real power couple with me today, and uh, we're going to be talking a lot of good shift. Uh, I'm going to take a minute to just tell you a little bit about each of them. Um, for those of you that have been listening for a long time, you may recognize them because they have both been on the podcast before. It's been gosh, about a year and a half, over a year and a half since I've had them each on. So I'm going to give a little bit of a recap. First, let me tell you about Jennifer Jimenez. First of all, she's a gorgeous. Let me just tell you, she is a striking, beautiful woman. She is an actress. Uh, she's a reality TV celebrity. She's a supermodel who has graced the cover of every magazine, I'm sure more than once. Um, she's appeared in music videos for Tupac Shakur, for Prince, Mick Jagger, among many others. Her films include Blow with Johnny Depp, Vanilla Sky with Tom Cruise, and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle with... Who was in that? Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. How could I forget? Anyway, Jennifer was also the Sober Living House manager for the VH1 reality TV series Sober House, which was a spinoff of Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, where she was a rehab technician at the Pasadena Recovery Center. And you also would have seen her on seasons two through five of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills for all you Housewives fans. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just tell you about Tim, very successful business entrepreneur, a nationally acclaimed addiction expert and recovery advocate. He is a TEDx speaker and a highly sought after speaker on the opioid epidemic. In 2016, Tim was invited as a guest of President Obama to the State of the Union Address. Tim is the author of From Dope to Hope, which I have right here. It is, yes, amazing, amazing book. It is the seriously gripping story of Tim's descent from being a successful entrepreneur uh, into the dark world of addiction, uh, prison, and then his subsequent recovery, which was nothing short of miraculous, let me tell you. Um, he was the subject of the A&E documentary, Dope Man, special shout out to that show. <laughs> we got a little connective tissue there. Um, he was named one of the top 100 visionaries by Real Leaders Magazine in 2018, and since walking out of prison, Tim's mission has been to help one addict at a time transform their lives and go from dope to hope. So, who? I think like we're out of time now. I mean, you guys and your accolades take up like the whole hour. Lori, you can come work for us know, and be our white person. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like parched. <laughs> that was a lot. That was amazing. Thank you. And, wow. And, thank you, well, thank you. you're welcome. Seriously, I I trimmed it down because I thought if I if I have to if I share all of your credentials and accolades, it's we're gonna be like 30 minutes before we can actually get into the meat of our conversation. So, anyway, welcome back, and now we get to see each other while we chat, which I'm no. super excited about. Um, so thank you. So you two, um, you two are on a big fat mission, um, mm -hmm. literally a mission to save lives. And I think that um, that is, I mean, now you've joined forces. How powerful is this? Are you, um, are you finding that you're able to kind of dive into that world um, in, in a bigger way even that you dreamed of before you came together? Wow, that yeah, is that's, a, that's a brilliant question, Lori. Do you wanna go, go first? Ahead. Thank you for asking that, That's, wow. You know, I was sitting there as you're reading everything and I just wanna help people. Jen just wants to help people and, and we ultimately teamed up originally two, two plus years ago I wanted to partner with a female in long-term recovery because when I was speaking or whatever, I 
females coming up to me and spewing all their trauma. And I'm like, hold on, I'm a guy, I'm in recovery, I'm not a therapist. And Jen and I partnered up to work together. And the day I met her, I fell in love and engaged five months later, married less than a year later. And yes, um, but it's- Whirlwind. Yeah, it it was fast. Yeah, it was a whirlwind, but everything kind of, you know, shifted with COVID happening. You know, we had kind of transitioned that we're always helping people. But we shifted more into speaking. You know, we had 85 speaking events this year planned. All of them got canceled due to COVID. Now we're starting to do some again via Zoom and online. But our entire world's got flipped upside down along with millions of other people. But we've had to readapt. um, And thank God, she's 14 and a half plus years clean and sober. I'll be eight um, November 1st. And, you know, it's... It's been a hell of a ride. We were, what were you talking about earlier where you were sharing, you know, we get married, but there's really. Yeah. So we, like what you, when you were talking, first of all, the intro, I was like, wow, I married a badass man. Like it just, it still throws me off. Like I married a supermodel. (laughs) My life does not suck. And an actress and celebrity. (laughs) But like, we both have the same passions. We have different stories. Our backgrounds are different. But our emotions are the same. Pain is pain, happy is happy, sad is sad, and we suffer from the same disease. And we're both in recovery. Um, Tim loves to help people. I mean, like, I, he wakes up and he loves his morning time, alone time, when I sleep, because yeah. um, he gets up way too early. And then I hear him on calls, and that's how I wake up. And then he comes upstairs, and, and he'll wake me up. And then he'll be like, okay, I'm going to go back to my coffee. You know, that means, like, I get to lay in bed for another 15 minutes. Yeah. But he loves to help people. He will take a call from anybody. Um, and I never knew that my story would help others. Me telling my truth would help mm-hmm. others. And forming that combination, I think, has made it powerful. Yeah. I love when I see like a glimpse of sparkle in someone's eye or they relate or they laugh or they go, oh, me too, or gosh, she's crazy or she has a crazy story. I get a reaction from somebody. Right. Um, and um, I've had like a different layer of protection over my recovery and my accessibility than Tim did. And us, when, when he came to me, like, boy, my life has been like on a hundred ever since. And I feel that like, you know, even though it's been a whirlwind and it's been fast, I don't know if I said that word right, but like we met, we fell in love, we knew, I just knew, you know, and I'm also yeah. not 20, you know, and I, and I chose to live the second half of my life happy and we are now uncovering discovering discarding that together which has been such a great journey that's and, beautiful um, i know that i just knew i didn't believe yeah. it loved first sight i met tim it was love at first sight it's been game on and i thought wow we get married december 31st everyone's like 2020 gonna be your year i'm like yeah, <laughs> yeah. and boom you know like talk about yeah. I think uh, I think a lot of people had that. I think a lot of people had that reaction about 2020. So far, so, so much for uh, laying out plans and and very strategic goals for the for the upcoming year. Right, every now and then, uh, yeah, a curveball comes your way, and it's time to pivot and adjust and adapt. Right, but you yeah. know, one of the things I want to start off with is, um, and and you kind of referred to it a minute ago when you said telling your story and you didn't realize the power there would be in that. And so I want to talk a little bit about it, about using your voice, because actually when you and I, Jennifer, did our podcast over a year and a half ago, we we touched on that just a little bit. um, And I kind of put a pin in it. And I just knew that there was a bigger story about that. And then I heard you talking about it again on your new podcast, on your first episode. And uh, we're going to talk about that later too. But, but I think that, you know, when it comes to using your voice, um, I think that's really an important subject to kind of dive into and share with everybody a little bit about that. Um, I know that um, maybe for you, if I remember right, some of that, um, oh, what's the word? Like, not inability, but really no need or encouragement to use your voice kind of, kind of is, it's part of the modeling industry. That was, that was my experience too, because I was a child model. I I grew up doing it and it was something that in my, you know, adult years when I was trying to figure out why is it so hard for me to express 
whatever I want to express, you know, if I feel like maybe it's not going to be accepted well. And when I, you know, when I kind of rewound back to, you know, how did this happen? I realized that one of the things for me about, about growing up in that business was that, you know, not only is there no, there's no call for you to use your voice when you're a model, right? And number two, um, it's, it's, it's really, it's, you're not invited to. There's no reason to. You're basically a prop, right? So just follow direction, you know, do what you're supposed to do. And then that's it. That's all that we need from you. So tell me about your experience in it and how that kind of played into, um, you know, the, the part about coming to the point where you wanted to you express yourself and then maybe how that um, played into transitioning into acting. So, um, I, I thank you for relating and thank you for saying that, that's sharing that part of your story, you know, because you always, you're never sure what that may sound like when you tell your truth, you know, and, and I, I was always taught that I was only as good as my next job cover campaign and that I, it was all about the outside. It's good. As, I'm, I'm only as good as my next job cover campaign. I'm only as good as that sells, you know, I, I'm just a hanger. My voice never mattered. Anytime I had a creative input, which part of what I did was creative, obviously, yeah. um, it didn't matter. And then I remember standing, one of the first jobs I did when I got discovered by Bruce Weber was a movie called Let's Get Lost. It was a documentary on Chet Baker. It was actually nominated for a Best Documentary at the Oscars, won every award, cons, um, Venice Film Festival, all those film festivals. And I didn't even know about it. And people and I, I just real, realized it, found that out a few years back. And when people are like, how did you not know? And like, come on, like you did a movie and you didn't know it was nominated. I was like, no, I was busy modeling. Like we didn't have cell phones and all that back yeah. then. You know, I was in Europe and I didn't know any better. I was, I just did that thing. And, but I remember doing that movie and my voice mattered at that moment. You know, when I was in on film and I was speaking, it mattered and no one could tell me not to talk. Um, so when I, uh, when I started getting sober, when I got sober this time around, 14 and a half years ago, my sponsor said, you know, I need you to find your voice. I don't care how you find it, just find it. And, you know, the four hardest words I had to learn in recovery was no, that's inappropriate, I don't know, and help. Um, mm -hmm. Please help, please help me, whatever, in that area, in that, that realm. And it's still really hard because I'm a people pleaser because I still feel that, you know, my whole life, I never felt good enough. I never felt that I mattered. I never felt, you know, if you like me, then maybe I would like me. If he liked me, then maybe he loved me, then maybe I would love me. Yeah. And I still at times wake up going, God, I'm a piece of shit. You know, I mean, I'm going to be really honest. Like we all have our fears. We all go through like, how am I going to get through this? Whatever that is, you know, or, you know, yesterday, for example, I went into a dark moment. Like I just went dark and I cried hysterically. Tim doesn't get it. I suffer from depression. I have not been in one full day of a depression since I've been with Tim. And it's because I've realized I've had connection and, and, and purpose. Prior to that, I'd be 12 and a half years sober and I'd be like day three into a depression because I wasn't using my voice. And um, I wasn't telling everybody until I figured it out. But now I don't have a chance to not figure it out. He'll be like, no. what's wrong with you? Like, it, he doesn't get it. He doesn't have mental health issues, but he's trying to understand it and have empathy. Right. With it. And that's right. all I need. Like, I don't need him to fix it for me. And right. uh, it's interesting. Guys tend to want to fix it. And I'm like, no, let me just express, you know? And I always say to him, like, babe, I don't need you to fix it. I just need you to hear me. Like, and he's a guy, you know, he's a man. Like, guys don't get that. But you utilizing your voice and, one thing I always hear Jennifer when she does a professional speaking event is when she was modeling, you're always replaceable. There's yeah. 20 girls that are hotter, hotter skinner, tighter, tighter, tighter yeah. waiting to replace you. And she got into acting because her voice mattered. And fast forward now to where we're at, we are the voice for the voiceless. Because when people are thinking of harm killing themselves, they have mental health, they're struggling with alcoholism or substance abuse, or they're in a home experiencing trauma, they don't know who to talk to. And, and we just try to get people to put your hand up to ask for help. And the reason why is because we talk about it. Like Tim always talks about like, Tim, I mean, like I've been very public, but in a very private way. Like I know how to handle that. Mm -hmm. I get together with Tim, there's no privacy. Like there's I don't no filter, get, there's no filter. Yeah, I mean like, and, 
he's like, nope, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about that. And I'm like, okay. And he'll just spill well, the beans. You and know? you know what did that, Jen? I don't mean to cut you off. When I, a lot of people didn't know, Lori, that I had overdosed on heroin, hit two cars, put four people in the hospital. I fought my case. I go to prison. I just kind of fell off the face of the earth for 13 and a half months. But I remember the day I got out of prison, I'm now divorced, lost my home, all these, my, but I was 13 and a half months sober. And I put a big post on social media, on Facebook, letting people know, because in my sick, twisted mind, it was selfish. I'm like, I'm going to put it out there that I'm 13 and a half months sober. And now I've got all these eyes on me. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of pushed me to keep recovery first, which I did, and, and things all worked out. Mm -hmm. But I was holding myself accountable, but I said, I'm never going to lie, cheat, or steal again. I'm always going to speak my truth, good, bad, ugly, because I don't want to be a people pleaser anymore. And sometimes you as a mother, Lori, Lori, you might be the enabling mom that is keeping your daughter Montana from getting well. I'm hypothetically, you know, yeah, right. or, or, it's, or it's your husband, Eric, he's the problem. He's the enabler. He keeps bailing around. Up. People need to hear the truth, even if the truth hurts, but people also need to hear the hope so they can put their hand up. And, yeah. And yeah. And, and it's, it. and it's interesting though, because like, like Jennifer, you, um, you talked about, um, like with respect to the things that you struggled with, I mean, there was alcoholism and drug addiction and depression and eating disorders and, you know, quite I mean, a few things. Uh, so there's a lot. And then you, I remember hearing you say that, um, you know, you, you hid those things, uh, uh with, for obvious reasons, but um, but I, if I understood you right, you also talked about you hid your your recovery kind of for a long time too. The whole thing, and it's so opposite from Tim, who went through everything you just laid out, Tim. And then as soon as you could, you literally went out and just blasted it out to the world. And you know, so your voice was out there right away for all the reasons you just mentioned. And Jennifer, you took a you took a while. You hid everything, including your recovery for a long time my whole life I did you know and I just remember again it was about the image I'd go to the yeah. room and I'd be you know at the top of my game in magazines and movies and all this I'm like please don't tell anyone it's an anonymous program but I get it's an anonymous program like and then I do a show called Sober House and I break my anonymity on a worldly scale like mm -hmm. there's no if hands or butts it's all over the world and I remember like doing the view one day and I called my sponsor. I was probably like three and a half years sober, three years sober. And I was like, yo sponsor, um, I'm gonna do the view. I think it's gonna help a lot of people. You know, like trying to be cool. And she was like, let's not get this twisted. It's not gonna help anyone but you. I mean, I was like, but I broke my anonymity and I'm gonna talk about it. And she's like, honey, you broke your anonymity because you needed it. You were, you're that fucked up. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my God. You know, and I needed that though, but I needed that. Like, yeah. I, Broke my, but it wasn't, I didn't know it was to help other people. Like we didn't know what those shows were going to be like. So it happened, but then yet I had, again, I talk about this layer I had, like it was Tim. A protection went, layer. I, excuse my language. Just Tim went balls to the wall and was like, hi, this is me. Take me or leave me, you know? And, and the program taught me to reprogram my mind and my thinking and my beliefs of, no shame to my game. And I have eating disorders. Yes, I've been sexually assaulted. Yes, I've been verbally abused. Yes, I've been mentally abused. I'm not shameful. I've also overcome that. And I still work very hard to not go backwards in that yeah, yeah. area, those areas or eating disorders, you know? Right. I'm kind of checking. I would like, when we got COVID, I started losing weight because I, excuse me, I had a lot of diarrhea. And so like, then the <laughs> third doctor, got us on the highest dose possible of prednisone for a month. And I gained all this weight. So like right now I'm heavier than I've been in a hot minute. And I keep going, baby, am I, am I no, fat? And like, you're fine. And you he's like, fine. stop, baby. But like, I'm like still breaking that pattern of like, right. oh my God. Like, and then I'm like, wait a minute. I just came back from almost dying. Like get over yeah. yourself again. Like, and I'm not 20. I think you're, you guys are pretty real. I mean, let's see, this is going to be episode 97. And I think out of 97 episodes, it's the first time anybody's ever even said the word diarrhea on my show. So. Yeah, heard, wait till I start talking. Really? You'll be banned from the internet. 
<laughs> well, okay. Let's just keep it together. Just keep it together. Cause yes, I've seen you guys on your show. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, no, it's awesome. But um, okay. So the f one question that I think this is kind of also a perfect segue into, um, into talking about um, more specifically relationships with people in recovery. So there was a point um, that I heard you guys talking about where um, Jennifer, you said that you were, you wanted to get back into acting and this was not too long ago and uh, you were really maybe a little hesitant or intimidated or just fearful of maybe his response. You weren't sure if you should share that. And, um, you know, cause you guys were on this path. Um, I'll be speaking engagements, you, you know, the train kind of left the station. So, um, you know, you suppressed it, I guess, for a while is, is, you know, the point there. So, so I guess, Tim, when, when Jennifer finally, um, said, you know, I really have this itch to get back into this. Um, so she was, you know, had the guts and the courage to say, oh, I'm really feeling this. Um, how did you feel and what did you think? You know, it's funny the way you phrase it. You're really good at what yeah, you do, Lori. Really you're really good at what you do. You know, we have got together and, and we're, we're speaking and we're doing interventions and we're consulting and doing all this. And I don't know if she was afraid or maybe she was, but once she said, Tim, I got to tell you something. You know, I've, I've really been thinking about it. I want to get back into acting. I'm like, good, do it. Yeah, he I would much it. rather have, I'll go do what I do. I want my wife, my best friend to be happy doing whatever she does. If she says, Tim, I just want to go garden all day, go garden all day. I will support you with whatever you want to do. Because on the flip side, the industry we're in gets very chaotic. And I've told her, look, if I just want to go open a carryout pizza place in Cody, Wyoming, can we do that? She said, absolutely. You tell me when and where and we're there. But it was really exciting. And then she put it, Jen talks about putting it out to the universe. And she put it out to the universe. And not two weeks later, she gets a call from a friend of a friend. A week later, we're meeting with a producer. She doesn't get one movie. She gets two. Then she gets a TV pilot. She gets me, she calls him and says, hey, if there's like a bar scene with an alcoholic drunk, can, yeah. Tim, can Tim sit at the bar and act like he's a drunk? Five hours later, they text, they give me the lead role in the pilot. So we're both in this pilot. Crazy. We're wow. all excited. Of course, she's, how many pilot calls have you okay. on? For 20 years, I've been basically, I say, selling my soul to the industry to get my first, like to get a pilot. I can't tell you how many, hundreds and hundreds. And I- I, I get the one. first one. So yeah, anyway. I know. <laughs> but, it's like he's a and I, villain, The, the like, funny thing is I could, I'm not phased. I, I've met a lot of celebrities. I know them, I've worked with them. They're just people to me. Um, and Jennifer's world and our, and our recovery world, and our, you meet some high profile people, but they're just normal people to me. I don't- care if you're this person or that person, you, you bleed red, you, you pee yellow, hopefully, or white or whatever. Right, clear, but clear. On, I don't drink I'm sorry, water. Lori. But anyhow, the point to the story was, it was awesome. But then we came back. Two days before we were Two days shoot. before we were to shoot. California, shoot California shut, down. shut down. And then she yeah. just got another movie as well, but. You they're know, like big movies. Like they're big yeah, actors. Yeah, she's got and big actors. And I'm like, you know what? I put it out there. But the great part of all this is that before, if like I turned down a lot of movie roles back in the day because I thought it was too good for it. Now I'm like, I'll do whatever, just be a part of the creative process. Not whatever, but like something that I would like. Yeah. And um, now it's like, okay, so it'll come back when it's supposed to. I'm not like dying. Like that's not my heart. Like my soul is to be part of a creative aspect and, and, and process, but like it doesn't define who I am. Just like, being like recovery doesn't define who I am, but I get to do what I love. Um, and it's another passion. And people are like, that doesn't really make sense. Like acting and recovery industry. But, and I'm like, but you know what? That's the beauty of it. I can become whoever I want at any given yeah. time. You, you know, the interesting thing is too, Lori, in the past two years, we've had a lot of letdowns and broken promises, but we finally got to the point now to where, God's opened the doors and we've got some really exciting things that we'll be able to announce in the next 
45 to 60 days that we've always wanted to have happen and we manifested and it's all come together now and it, it's just cool the way things work out yeah and you know it's been it's great because i the acting part i was actually suppressing for years and then i started thinking about like i'm always constantly asking myself questions right like does this make me happy? Am I doing, what am I doing this? Whatever day it is, you know? And I'm like, you know, I've been missing that whole like of like acting. And, and then finally I was like, I'm just going to say it. And I got to use my voice again. And he was so supportive, but someone who's going to love you is only going to support you always right. you know, right. and encourage you. And it was so great to have that because I said to him, I'm not going to go out and audition. And I don't want to go back into that Hollywood, like, world that I was in before but if it comes to me or if I put it out there you know do then it. I'll do it and it just kept falling right. into my lap and, and now yeah. it's like well we're again waiting to see what it's gonna yeah. happen yeah amazing how that works when you just um, put it out there and then just relax about it and not get super attached to how it's going to show up when it's going to show up um, it is it is kind of a magical process um, can i throw something really magical in Lori? i don't want to hijack your show here <laughs> two weeks ago saturday jen did a photo shoot we did a photo shoot because we need headshots for whatever speaking events or pages whatever now i've been with jen for almost two years supermodel actress celebrity I haven't seen her work a camera in work a photo shoot. Can I say the F word? Because it was epic <laughs> magical. I have never, the amount of work just to do this and then, you know, okay, here, take my picture, go, great, yeah, dope man, whatever. Yeah. To see a pro, man, it was, it was, it was, I don't even, exhilarating. And I'm like, that's a lot of work. And it was a 14 hour day. And I'm like, you did this every day? She's like, every day, 30 outfits, boom, boom, on a plane to Paris, go to Milan, got to go to Tokyo, back to LA. Wow. wow. I give credit to all you yes. and my wife and everyone that's so hard. Like, like, you were like, you did. Like, the yeah. Yeah. It's unless you, unless you are, you know, walking in somebody else's shoes, you, you just don't know. Right. And you know, my experience in that industry was not even remotely like, like Jen's was. Um, first of all, I'm just like barely five, three and a half. So there's no runway modeling you're for perfect. five, three and a half. You're beautiful, yeah. Yeah. But, oh, but before we get, get into the, uh, the next segment, um, I'm going to be like, since we're still talking about modeling, here's my first job, you guys, at age five. Can you see that? Come on. You are so adorable. Wow. I love it. That's awesome. So, yeah, I get it. I was slaving away under the hot lights there. The hand modeling, too. You see that? Oh, my God. Okay, so people don't understand holding that control and, like, how hard it is. Like, right. you have right. to, whatever it is, I don't even know what I, like, you have to do it correctly. You, well, yeah. yeah, because, and you have to hold it for a long time. Um, like, you know, they have to shift lighting around and people are, you know, they didn't have digital cameras then. So there was just a lot that went into it. And you just got to sit still sometimes for hours, just in the same position. Um, you know, I never anyway. Had, I, never had three teachers on set the whole entire, my whole entire career. Can you believe that? Three. Wow. In That's amazing. In America, you're supposed to have teachers on set. I was so protected that they only had it three times. That means I wasn't protected, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, we, we got into a lot of your story, both of you, your stories in our past episodes. So before I forget um, and we move on, I do want to just remind everybody, if you want to hear, and you should hear all of the details of Tim and Jennifer's stories, um, uh, episodes 23 and 24, uh, were Tim and with me, uh, Jen was on episodes 36 and 37. So make sure you go back and check those out because they're, they're unbelievable stories and it'll really make you appreciate uh, what they're doing now and why they're doing it. So let's jump into talking about some, um, maybe a, a more of a unique set of challenges for um, people that are in recovery that are now in relationship with each other. Because you guys know, you know, I do a lot of um, relationship, I call them relationship tips on the podcast. Um, I've been married a long, long time. And so I have a few good ones. And uh, I think from your perspective and what you guys have 
have been through. Um, and what you're kind of, are you still considered newlyweds? It's only been what, a year yeah. and a half okay. or something? So well, we're, we've been married eight. Okay. We've been, we've been, we got married New Year's Eve. Eight months so we've been married 16 days. eight months and 16 days. Okay. We've been Wait, together. Right? I don't know. Yeah. So you're still newlyweds is the oh, point. Yeah. Right, yeah. right? So okay. You get married and you walk into COVID. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Jennifer's never been married <clears throat> in her life. Doesn't have any kids. I had been married twice. When I met her, I was in coming out of a, a, I was in the middle of a divorce. I have five children. She didn't know any of this. And I mean, I, <laughs> she didn't just get me. Mm -hmm. She got all the kids, the exes. It's been, it hasn't. Well, I told Tim, I didn't get the exes. I'm telling you that. Um, I well, got his kids. And yeah. I always said that I would, um, I would totally be by his side and his kids side for anything. Um, but his ex-wives are not my responsibility. I of do course. have yeah. somewhat of a re relationship with one of them, the first one. So Shannon's great. Um, and the other one, God bless her. Um, and so it's been, you know. You are a hero. You are, you really are. You're a good person. Um, and yeah. so it's just been an interesting thing because I didn't, and that's why I try to express to Tim, I didn't sign up for the wives. The, the yeah. kids, yes. His, yeah. his children, yeah. absolutely. And, and they love And I love his children. They um, love her. And I would want the best for them always. Of course. And, and it's a blessing to be a part of their lives. Um, but it's been really interesting. You would think that, like, we always say in recovery, if you're under a year of sobriety, do not get in a relationship with another ah. person in recovery. Okay. Or in general. Ever. Ever. Okay. It, it, it will, it, romance and finance will always bring a person out. Um, ah. Yeah, like if you're not, you know, if you're having financial crisis. You need to work on yourself And if first. you were to hear this and not see us and know that I have 14 and a half years sober and Tim has almost eight years sober, you would think that I was a newcomer getting into a relationship with a guy who's been married twice and has kids and, and mm -hmm. all this stuff. You like the ex con But I do. But I do. But, the bad you know, boy thing, right? Yeah. Gets us every yeah. time. <laughs> I knew what I wanted and I knew I wanted to be well, happy. And like he came. I mean, Lori, you've got to understand life. when I, she, she showed a picture on Instagram of her in a swimsuit and her butt. So I finally messaged her. And you proposed? <laughs> yeah. That's right, right there. And then, but when I flew to Florida to meet her, <laughs> yes, she was attractive, but I, I wasn't looking for a relationship. I strictly, I told her, you know, we could speak together. We can be a power couple. We can do a documentary. We could open a treatment center. There's all these, we can do interventions <laughs> together. Um, when I, I'm standing on the curb at Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. Airport, I see her pull up, this smile. She jumps out of the car and forgets to put it in yeah. park, goes, puts it in park, <laughs> gave me the biggest hug in the world and kissed me on the cheek. But it was like we were connected from belly it button like to belly button. It was like a magnet of room. I knew right there and then. I told her two hours later, I'm going to marry you and spend the rest I'm of my like, life with you. And she's like, hold on. Yeah. Why don't you finish your divorce? Yeah. Maybe you want to sow your oats. Yeah, but I knew. Yeah. And uh, it was just meant to be. But That's Jennifer awesome. always talks about the second half of our life. We want to live happy. And we're yeah. figuring that out right now. You know, we get to right. figure that out together. And it's been really beautiful because... For so long, Tim allowed himself to be tormented, like I have, you know, and in such a in different lights. But like, you know, it we deserve happiness, you know, we really do. Absolutely. Different. And yeah. there's a lot of boundaries. Thank God I, I have boundaries, and I got top boundaries because I get to apply them into our relationship too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not like drill sergeant or anything like that, but no. like also <clears throat> using my voice. Like a woman doesn't feel her voice matters in general most of the time. We're women. Like we we are seen differently. I mean, it's just a fact. But then when we use our voice, we're either a bitch or difficult, you know? Oh, and, yeah, you and, have been. And, <laughs> but I, uh, you're going down. No. Um, but I use my voice and he respects it. And he allows me, he'll, he'll kind of, you know, talk well, I, a little I, bit. I'm the type of guy, <clears throat> here's who I am. Now, when I worked in the management consulting space, I did really well. <clears throat> I'd go to take a new job. I would not show up Monday or Tuesday. Of course, I've been up doing cocaine and partying, but I deliberately did not show up, and I'd show up to work on Wednesday because I wanted to see what I could get away with. And, oh, yeah, grateful you're here. I'm like, I own these son of a guns. But if they were all pissed, I'm like, ah, this ain't going to work out. 
it was all what can I get away with? And, and with Jennifer, I learned very quickly, this lady's got a voice. She doesn't put up with, there's no manipulation or anything because mm -hmm. I'm an addict and I like to manipulate. Oh, I don't want to take the garbage out of my bed. You know, whatever. It's just my mm -hmm. nature. But she taught, I have learned so much from her too about respect for me, respect for myself. Say no, say mm -hmm. no, say mm -hmm. no. Because I was doing all these wonderful things, but I wasn't taking care of myself. Yeah. So you actually like literally just answered two of my questions. So awesome. Um, which was one, which is what have you learned from each other? So you just told me what you learned from Jennifer. What about you, Jennifer, as far as what you've learned, some, a main thing that you've learned yeah, from see. Tim. What have you learned from me? Great question, Lori. Really. <laughs> what have you learned from me, Jennifer? I learned that it's all better than prison. Like his whole thing. <laughs> Everything's better Everything than prison. Everything is better than prison. I'm like, Chris, I never went. But like, we, we literally were, had again, I'm gonna go back to COVID, like we thought we were gonna get out of it. Like you, you get to a place where you're like, it, I'm just gonna be like this forever. And it's painful. And he's like, this is better than prison. I'm like, I didn't go to prison. Uh, but what I do understand though, is that it's gonna be okay, no matter what. We're gonna get through this. Let's have fun. And we're I'm just saying what you you taught me. Going back to prison. We're gonna get and it's gonna be okay. And that I he's not gonna leave my side. And like he's not he's doing this journey like ride or die till the end. Yeah. With yeah. Right now. And that we're doing the journey. And that yeah. there it's unconditional. Like it's for what I have been always uh viewed as it has nothing to do with that with him it's really for my inner being and my mm -hmm. inner self and and to be loved truly mm -hmm. completely is mm -hmm. beautiful it is it is beautiful and i'm but concerned. you haven't learned anything from me <laughs> there is your answer i'm like she hasn't learned a damn thing she knows i love her she knows i'm not gonna leave her but she hasn't learned a damn thing why did she just say that <laughs> she's like a politician she did she said a whole bunch Holy of stuff but did no, it I, I, I'm, waiting, right? I'm waiting for this profound moment it was a profound moment like, i almost cried for you we <laughs> Yep. Uh, we'll work. Let's circle back around to that. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, so, all right. We talked about, um, I want to make sure that anyone that's listening is you just, you know, getting a lot of good stuff that, that makes them think about their own situation, especially if they're in a similar situation as you guys have been in or, or maybe they're in now, but, um, what, um, so they should wait a year. Anybody that's in recovery should, before you dive into a relationship, give it at least a solid year, work on yourself. And then I want to know how common is it, do you feel, um, for someone in recovery to, when they feel it's time that it's safe to meet somebody and enter into a relationship, um, is it common for that addiction to just be transferred to another person? 100%. How do, we're enablers. How do they know? You know, is, so, God. When your feelings reflect on who, what the other person is thinking, there's or feeling, and the validation of that, and it, you're not feeling enough unless they give you that, there's definitely a problem. The codependency in it. We definitely suffer from codependency issues. People in recovery. Um, and, uh, you know, you want to be the caretaker, the the savior, the, uh, you know. The rescuer. Yeah, and, like, that's something, like, I always tell Tim is that, like, he can't fix my feelings. You know, like, I have, they're just feelings. They're, they're not facts. We go through them and, and all that, but he can't fix it for me. But, but Just what, like I can't fix it. For what me. else did you say though when we got together? Jen doesn't need me. She I, got yeah. I said to him, I said, I don't need a thing from you. I don't need you. I, I want Money, to be with you. Need, yeah. I don't need him to take care of me. I don't need him to, you know, validate me. I don't need him to do these things. Do I want to be with him? And that's why I've chosen to be with him. And he's chosen. Yeah with me i said I, I said i hope that's why you choose to be with me as well it's, it's and, a want and, not a need right yeah. and in hindsight if jennifer wasn't in 
long-term recovery, I would have never got into a relationship with her. You never. become very clingy and very needy. Yeah, and like, um, I mean, people in recovery, and it doesn't matter if female or male, you can become mm -hmm. very needy and dependent on the other person. And again, it's the validating, you're switching it to, you know, relationships, people, you know, switch it to workaholic. Like you have to really be in check in all these areas to make sure that you're fully in recovery. I mean, the last thing when you're getting sober, the last thing you need is a relationship. I mean, get to know yourself and figure out why you've been altering your mind with drugs or alcohol or whatever, and, and rebuild the internal and don't look for it. You know, and, and if you're in recovery, you can have a relationship with a normie, a person that drinks still or whatever, that's fine. Just because you're sober doesn't mean you have to be with a yeah. sober partner. Okay. You don't have to do that. You because know? your recovery can become one, and we do not want that to happen. You know, my personal recovery is different than Tim's Tim. recovery, and uh, what we do for a living in recovery in is our job. Is our job. It's not a recovery. So, so sorry. Like meetings. When yeah. we were back, when we he could go to meetings, meetings, I go to men's meetings. meetings. Okay. I talk on the phone with my girlfriends who are sober and also normies, but he can't relate to my thoughts as much as I'm in love with him and he's in love with me. I want you and I think differently, no. different DNAs than that, mm -hmm. you know? And, right, and right. so as much as he would try to want to understand he can't. But and I can't women think. need to be with women. Men need to be with men. We do do a couple meetings a week together. In the but first five years too, like I've transformed so many in the last 14 and a half years, so many different times. But the first five years, you really changed constantly. I mean, yeah. you're so different than you were the first Absolutely. Five. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, so. I imagine. So, okay, when it comes, I mean, you both are um, not only, you know, you've been, you've been in recovery now and sober for what, eight and 14 years about. Is that what, what we said? So, um, and your mission is helping others. Um, how... How do you find the appropriate place, like when it comes to friends? So let's say you see um, friends um, and you suspect that they're struggling and they're maybe, you know, going into that danger zone. Um, you know, do you bring it up? Is it, are you crossing a line? You know, are, are they receptive if you bring it up? How, what's the best way to handle that? So my uh, suggestion always is, come with um truth you know come to someone if you're you're my friend or if i'm your friend and i'm concerned about you i need to say that i'm concerned about you i can't change it i can't fix it i'm not the cause of it but i'm concerned for you and how can i help you is there anything i can do and if you say no i can't there's nothing i can do and people always say to me about certain friends of mine um or other people that they know that are in the spotlight that I would know of. And they're like, why don't you help them? And it's like, first of all, people don't know what I do or don't do to my fight with my friends. And secondly, I can't save anyone. I, you know, I'm here to save yeah. myself and that's my responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. So it's important to, to be very um, cognizant. cognizant of it. Yeah. My, I just speak your truth through love and grace, especially with the, the high school college kids if they got a, a friend talking about suicide or, or they know they're crossing that line, you better say something because with fentanyl and the things today, you take one ecstasy pill or a Vicodin or an Oxycontin, it's caught with fentanyl, you're dead. There's no coming back from death. And if you really feel there's a, an issue, get a hold of someone like us, an interventionist. We can guide and direct you. And if needed, you and your family are yeah, come and get right. an intervention done. But right now is a very crucial time. I think it's very important to have an open conversation right now because there's the suicide hotlines are over a thousand percent times more than before. Go to the, the roof, mental health lines up 850%. are killing themselves. Kids are killing themselves. Um, more suicides than ever before. There is more relapses and overdoses what? than ever. Now li listen to these numbers. Girls between 10 mm. and 14 years old, suicide is up 140%. Oh my God. Four, 15 to 18 is up like 85%. And a lot of that is due to this social media. Right. Oh my God. So, all right, you guys, to what would you say as we kind of come down the home stretch here um, to turn your life around? Where does the real shift? 
because that's, you know, it's, that's what the show is all about, shifting here. Where does it start? Where does it have to start to really turn your life around, in your opinions? By putting your hand up and asking for help. And, and that's not just drugs and alcohol. People could be struggling emotionally, physically, weight-wise, financially, uh, creatively, and empowering yourself to say, you know what, I need to change some. Nothing changes if nothing changes. And what I tell people is the best advice I can give you is don't take any advice from the last person you got high with or used with, and that's yourself. So you have to surround yourself with people that have more knowledge and wisdom that can give you the guidance and direction. Get out of your own way. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jennifer? Same thing? Um, you know, I, I feel that like for me, I didn't know how to ask for help. I always try to put myself in like back where I was yeah. then. Um, if you just have that little bit of desire, that little bit of a mm. monster seed of desire or um, wanting to change, you can. You you know, and there's hope. And you there's hope. If you're, you still breathing, hope. Yeah, if you're still breathing, there's hope. People are like, oh, that person's hopeless. We, we, have, we have seen people on death's door yeah. that when we walked in to do an intervention, the family's like, just go through the motions. And we get the person into whatever treatment center or hospital and walk out of there going, God, I, I hope they get it. But chances are they're not. And six months later, a year later, they are thriving. Um, I, I didn't get sober because I wanted to get sober. I got sober because I didn't know how to live or die correctly. And after coming from the depths of insanity and hanging myself and not being able to speak or form sentences or walk or talk to see where I'm at today that I can kind of sometimes form sentences and I can walk. I'm a little klutzy just because I'm a klutz, but to see the transformation and to see that in many faces all over the world, um, that has story has happened for other people. It's a miracle. So I do believe in miracles, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And I love what you guys just said a minute ago. If if you have a heartbeat, there's hope. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the essence of it. If your heart is still beating and you have the desire, there's hope. I love the I love that. All right. So before we run out of time, I want to ask you about um, the new podcast, the Tim, the Tim and Jen show. Um, it's what, let me see here. Real talk on health, wellness, and real life issues. Sounds a lot like what we're doing here. I love, love, love it. Tell me about it. Well, I, you know, well, we were being asked to do a podcast for a very long time and I kept saying no 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 and then things were happening and then we got COVID they're like do it then I'm like I'm not doing that um although Tim kept because we're us, supposed to be doing this out of a beautiful state-of-the-art studio in Beverly Hills but due to COVID we can't so we're so, doing it this way and we I believe again it's back to like it's you know I believe we all have a story to tell it's up to us we want to tell the story and mm -hmm. it's about overcoming obstacles and adversities and Standing in your truth, you know, that's just so important um, to be able to use your voice and find your voice um, in whatever area or situation you're going through or not being able to get through yet. You know, I think that's important too. Like, again, it's just being truthful and other people being able to relate because we're in a place in the stage in our life right now where we're not being able to be communicative or have like personal contact with other people as much. And it's just important to feel that you can connect to someone else. Mm -hmm. So our podcast is pretty much about that and anything else. Yeah, well, anything, anything else, about. because people, we didn't want to do a recovery podcast. You know, recovery is great. It gave us our lives and some of the people we have on are in recovery and they might talk about it, might not, but there's so much more to it and we want to chop it up and just have fun and see where it goes. And, you know, yeah. I can see you being a guest in the near future. I know. Hopefully. I would love to, I would be honored. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's tell people before I ask you uh, to share a final thought, um, where they can find out more about you guys, this, your services, the podcast, just uh, plug away. Um, our website for interventions or to book us for speaking events are timandjennifer.org. If you have a loved one struggling, you can call us at 844-611-HOPE. You can find Jennifer on any social media platform at... Jennifer Jimenez, G-I-M-E-N-E-Z. 
Yeah, and me, you can find Tim Ryan, <laughs> Dope to Hope. And uh, yeah, thank you for the plugs. Absolutely, absolutely. I hope uh, I hope everyone checks them out because you know what? If you're not struggling yourself, um, 100% you know somebody that is because it's so prevalent in our society. And as you guys mentioned earlier, it's really skyrocketed even down into our, our youngest um, this year alone. So um, please make sure that you investigate everything that Tim and Jen are doing. They're amazing. Um, and, and if you have a heartbeat, right, there's, there's hope. So uh, don't be shy. So you guys, before I let you go, um, what are your final thoughts on, to share with people on literally doing what you guys have done, which is making your mess, your message? Ooh, you know, you've got to find, for me, you know, your inner happiness and your peace and your ride or die. And I couldn't imagine doing this journey called life without Jennifer um, because I lived it even where I've been at for the past five years prior to Jen coming in. I had a lot of people around me, but I was lonely a lot because I was giving and giving and giving and there's so much more, but, but find your ride or die and, and be true to yourself and have fun with whatever the hell you're doing. You know, the one thing we try to do is we laugh a lot. I'm usually only serious when I'm doing an intervention or working with the family or, or doing a professional speaking event. Otherwise, I'm, I'm chopping it up and having fun. I'm not here to be miserable. Mm -hmm. And I you? That. Um, I, um, wow, I just totally had a brain fart. It's part of COVID too. Making your that. mess your message. My message. Um, I, if you're... God, I'm, again, I did it again. I can't even believe it. So I'll just say this. Um, I know that it's a weird time right now. And I know that even on a daily basis, like for other people that are not in recovery, you know, that are normies as we call them, I've had many phone calls from girlfriends and other people in the industry and, and I, all walks of life calling me going, I think I might be suffering from depression or like some, you know, I'm, I'm really freaked out over what's going on in the world right now. And um, people are li living in a lot of fear and um, people are scared and some people are feeling hopeless, some people are scared. Um, what I can say to that is me too. And that I really encourage everyone right now, especially the ones that are really struggling, you know, in some form, shape, or way, um, to try to get to know the person they're trying to kill before they kill him or her. Because they might realize that they matter and their story is not done. It's up to them how they want to tell their story. And that we can honestly say right now that we love you and we expect nothing in return. You know, and it's really just spreading love and not hate right now out in the world um, because there's a lot going on. Yeah, that's beautiful. That was gorgeous and, uh, and just beautiful. I mean... I have a cavity that was so sweet, Jen. <laughs> it's amazing. You guys are you guys are super um, super human beings, and I I applaud you for making um, making your own messes into such a beautiful message out into the world because it is helping so many people. And I know you're you're just getting started. So uh, I, I really do appreciate you spending all this time with me um, again today. And I, uh, I can't wait for everybody to see this. And I look forward to reconnecting with you too soon. We love Thank you. you, Lori. We love you. Thank you for your time, my friend. We'll Thank see you me. soon. Thank you so much. So that is a wrap for us today, everybody. If you found some value, and I know you did, in anything that we talk about on We're Talking Shift, um, please take a minute to give it a rating. Make sure you subscribe and uh, make sure you share all this good shift with people. We got to spread it around, you guys. So until next week, stay feisty, my friends. Stay healthy. Go make some epic shift happen in your own lives. That goes for you too, Gary Vee. <laughs>